So, let's talk all things about the Oppo Find N3 and the OnePlus Open. They are basically the same phones, people. They are just locked to different regions in terms of releases. And we're gonna be talking about my thoughts on them, my reaction on them, because the overall general consensus on these devices has been very positive, but we're gonna break it down, learn about them, and really see what is good when it comes to the Oppo Find N3 and the OnePlus Open. Open for everything. Co-developed with Hasselblad, 1,559 pounds. I guess this is the equivalent of, so already I'm liking the fact that OnePlus are telling a much better story to kind of understand. All sized up for the familiar hold, okay. So they've gone with a traditional 20 by nine aspect ratio form factor, love to see it. Um, it's lighter than any fold at 240 grams. And again, the asterisk there is from what I know, if you're not going for the glass model, but a glass model is the one that looks really, really nice with the frosted glass back. Um, it's just five grams heftier than the best-selling iPhone 15 Pro Max. Um, and that's obviously base um, iPhone, uh, what you call it, 14 Pro Max. So this is the case where I don't believe you get the, um, the vegan level one. You can only get, get the glass one. I think the vegan level is the one that's lighter. Light makes might, I like that. Extraordinary materials bent, blend the best of both. Uh, titanium alloy, carbon fiber, and more built to uh, built to the hilt with aerospace materials. I always want to say that up to four times stronger than your surgical grade stainless steel. Hinge components utilize um, priority cobalt as well as alloy. Okay, interesting. So twice as depth-defying, depth twice as epic. All right, here we go. So the outward display is a 20 by nine aspect ratio, 2K resolution, 120 Hertz, adaptive refresh rate, LTPO 3.0 display. All right, and what we have here is a fluid super AMOLED display. Inside is a 7.82 inch 2K resolution display. Again, 120 Hertz LTPO. Um, it's a flex fluid, so it's using an ultra thin glass, um, just slightly under 90% screen to body ratio, 10 bit color, sRGB, DCI-P3, high frequency pulse width modulation PWM at 1,440 Hertz, shielded by ultra thin glass. Okay, here's where things get really interesting. Um, Obviously, it's a Dolby Vision certified display. Peak brightness outdoors, I'm guessing, is 2,800 nits, which is ridiculous. Um, and then, obviously, you've got the PPI and uh, the pixel density there. Pro XDR displays in and out, which is great. So that means the outer display is also 2,800 nits peak brightness for outdoor. I believe HDR is about 1,600 nits, and sustain is like 1,400 nits, which is crazy. Um, I believe this is a triple camera, a, a triple speaker system with multi-spatial audio speakers, unique to the OnePlus Open, um, going from stereo to hero. I really like that. I like I like the little stories. Um, we've got the latest version of Oxygen OS. Again, not the absolute latest because it is still Android 13. We are looking to see hopefully Android 14 on here with Oxygen OS 14. But what's look what's really looking is every from everything I've been seeing, the software optimization has been really done well with the open canvas, extended split screen apps, and flow beyond the display. The split, the screen, um, the giant, the screen giant upsizes your possibilities with more real estate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For maximum multitasking, simply nudge and swipe and pull to uh, fast focus across multiple apps, which is great, which is really, really great. Love to see it. Look at that. I love this, I love this, I love this. Um, dual splits and fast focus. Split the screen by swiping with two fingers down the middle of the screen, quickly to hop, yep, yeah, I like that. I like that, I like the, I like, I like, I like how they're really showcasing this properly. This is really good, this is really good stuff. I'm liking this, I'm liking this. Drag and drop and share. I think software, yeah, that that's sick, that's sick. I do like that. And obviously having triple splits as well, that's crazy. I love that. You can just, you know, fling through left and right. That's a really good look. Expand, 
Yeah, they've done well. They've done very well. Boy, Google, take notes. They've done very well with their initial software out of the gate, I must say. Analyzing data, reading content. Okay, and then cameras. So, main camera system is a 48 megapixel Sony LYT-T808 pixel stack sensor which is a 1 over 1.43 sensor size. Pixel size is 1.12. I think that's the unbinned pixel size. If that's the unbinned pixel size, that's very, very good. I like that. The telephoto is a six. So it's a 3X optical zoom. Uh, I would have loved this to be at least 4X, 5X. Uh, no, but at least it's high resolution. It's a half inch sensor size. The unbin pixel size is 0 0.7. So the bin pixel size is gonna be 16 megapixels. It's gonna be 1.7, no, 1.4, f2.6 with autofocus. That's good, that's good. It's a half inch sensor, yeah. And also the ultra wide is a half inch sensor size, 48 megapixels. 114 degree field of view. That's not that wide. That kind of worries me. So IMX 581. That's not that wide. Hmm. Because you really do need a field of view of at least 120 degrees to 123 degrees. I'm not sure about this. Hmm. Okay. But it's a it's a triple camera system co-collaborated with Hasselblad. So Interesting, interesting. Make night time the right time. I, I like this. I like this. I really like this. I like the little, little story hits and whatnot. So the stack sensor is meant to be really, stacked pixel resolution is meant to be really, really beneficial to low light performance. Something I really want to test again. And I've I've kind of said I've kind of said this that the first manufacturer that's gonna do this properly, I'm gonna be really happy with where give me a 0.5 ultra wide, a 1x main wide sensor, a 2x in crop on the main wide sensor, a 3x dedicated optical zoom, and then a 6x optical zoom, right? I'm very, very much interested to see how this 6x in sensor on the 3x optical zoom works because yeah I'm, i really want to camera test this oneplus oppo if you're listening and you're watching i am the home of the definitive camera comparison i will throw it next to the fold 5 i will throw it next to the pixel fold and i will give you a comprehensive breakdown of the camera performance please 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 let me know if that can be done Portraits and low light are highlight. I, I like, man, I like that. I like that. I don't know about you, but I like that. OnePlus is telling a very good story with their situations here. So I definitely want to try out a portrait mode. That looks really, really good. Um, shot on a OnePlus open, of course, the camera samples. And then specs on the performance, man. This is one This is one thing that OnePlus just doesn't play. They just do not play. You've got the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2. We're gonna we're gonna hear the announcement of the eight Gen three and probably at at the time of this stream probably in the next two hours to a day <laughs> the next the Snapdragon eight Gen three is gonna be announced sixteen gigabytes of low power double data rate generation five memory extreme LPDDR five X um, this is great you've got US UFS four point storage five hundred and twelve gigabytes definitely on affordable like this with how crazy the multitask it is 16 gigabytes of ram is great 67 watt fast charging i've said it 65 67 watts 65 watts is the upper limit of what a smartphone should be in this range where you've got somewhere between a 4500 to a 5000 milliamp power battery being able to charge from one percent to 100 percent in under 45 minutes around 45 minutes it's my dream right 45, 45 watts is the bare minimum now because with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, you're charging to 100% in about an hour. This is something Samsung does. So that's kind of like the bottom limit in my opinion. But yeah, 65 watts charge from zero to 100 or 1% to 100 
in around 45 minutes. That's my dream. That's what I want. Great to see that they've implemented it here. 4,805 milliamp hour battery in a split dual cell tech. Cross channel thermal conductivity, staying power always. Love that. Wi Fi 7, ready for the future. That is fantastic. Don't know if you need a firmware update for that, but that's really, really great to see. Very, very future compatible. Dual cellular 5G connectivity with two physical SIM cards, which is one thing I love. And, for, and of course, 5G connectivity. When we go to GSM Arena, what you can see is that I've got them lined up in terms of the comparison. And where we've got that lined up in terms of the comparison, if we go to differences, boom, <laughs> if everything grays out to be the same, uh, apart from like some, some marketing differences in terms of the naming, right? Whereas the upper find and free on the right says um, LTPO3 OLED. This says LTPO3 Super Fluid OLED. Oxygen OS, <laughs> Color OS 13.2. Um, it looks like the Oppo probably has a one terabyte of RAM option. So I guess if you want more storage, that's the one that you go for. Uh, video performance. Um, there's a 480 FPS mode on the OnePlus by the looks of it. Don't know if that's the same or it's just a typo. Selfie camera. Um, they managed to put 4K30 on the selfie camera, but no 4K60. So at least there is 4K this time rather than just the odd thing that they do, which is 1080p. Um, USB 3.1. Charging speeds are pretty much near enough the same. Yeah, they're the same phone, people. <laughs> they're the same phone, which is not necessarily a bad thing. But hey, I gave you the analogy of how some car manufacturers do this, depending on what region you're in. And we pretty much just go from there. Not having wireless charging is not the one. It just isn't. I I'm sorry to say. At this point, we should not be choosing between having wired charging and wireless charging. We can have both. You didn't have to put the fastest wireless charging in there. You could have just put 15 watts wireless charging. Trust me, everyone would have been happy. Not having wireless charging in there, it's inexcusable. I can't really let that pass in that sense. It makes no sense to me. And that's just me being real. And that's just speaking for the principle of whatever the price this is that you're charging for this, have a good value, mid or it, it needs to have wireless charging. You can't be omitting these little, little things, right? Whether it makes a difference or not. And another thing to really state is that I'm glad they've done well to make this more of a global launch with the split region-wise between what we're getting when it comes to OnePlus and Oppo covering as much regions as possible. But we are at a point right now where, especially in a Western market, if you don't have carrier partnerships, at least one on your side, minimum two. So at minimum one, at least two. Expensive devices like this, no one's gonna be buying them out, right? I say this because smartphones, especially, are such fast depreciating assets, they don't hold value very well, especially Android phones. The smartphones that hold the best value the longest is iPhones, but even then, they are still depreciating assets. If you are not getting this in carrier stores to make it easier for people to have carrier plans already that can just, you know, pay minimal upfront to no upfront, upgrade on a two year to three year plan with insurance and all these things that just make it easier for acquisition. Trust me, you're going to struggle to shift. And we, we, we circle back and we circle back into this situation where these are phones that Honestly, reviewers are gonna love, but normal people will have no chance of actually owning them. Carrier acquisition, right, doesn't mean that it becomes cheap. It just becomes more manageable. Those omissions make this almost a dead on arrival. It would have been a complete dead on arrival if it was just a China release only like what they did with the Oppo Find X, um, Find X6 Pro, mainly speaking from Oppo's perspective. So I'm glad it is a global launch. I'm glad you can get it directly from their, um, their websites. I'm glad it's going to be coming from other different places. Like if you're in the US, Best Buy and stuff, I'm glad. But in this current state of things and whatnot, missing things like wireless charging, not doubling down on making sure that you are getting carrier partnerships in one or two, it really just makes this a fairy, it just makes this a hamster on a wheel conversation. Form factor, build quality software. Yes, I know it doesn't have a true IPX8 rating and it's got an IPX4 rating, 
But that's okay. It looks like the IPX4 rating kind of really meets the mark. It hits things well. It does a very good jo job in respect to you. So I like that. I like that. So I've got to give them props. Again, they've promised four OS generations of updates, which is very good on par. One year of security, right on par with what Samsung are going to, are going to be promising. Um, we don't know in terms of the time scale, because Samsung are very good on a timely monthly manner which is really great to see. But overall, in my, in, my, in my just initial reaction, I want to look at it from a reaction point of view. This is a very, very good look. What OnePlus and Oppo have been able to co-collaborate and do with their first foldable. Well, OnePlus is first foldable, Oppo's third generation foldable, and they've got flippables as well, as I like to call them. This is a very good look. I definitely, 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 definitely want to get hands on with them and really test them, get to grips with them because I didn't get a Fold 5 get sent in. I can still probably ask for one to get it, come in on the late one just so I can do that three-way camera comparison of the Pixel Fold um, One Plus Open and the Fold 5 to really see the camera performance. Definitely want to do that. Would it be better than Samsung? No, I think Samsung just have it down when it comes to software. But I'll be honest with you, I think from what I'm seeing, a couple of things in there really stand above what Samsung have got to offer. A lot of people are talking about the hinge mechanism being a lot better. I still think Samsung makes a better overall hinge because I've seen online that the Samsung holds at pretty much more angles, more steady than what you have on the <clears throat> OnePlus Open and the Oppo Find M3. But what you're seeing is a much better management of the inner display crease. You don't get S Pen support. Samsung gives you S Pen support on the inner display, which is fantastic. But the displays are a lot brighter when it comes to what we're getting on the OnePlus Open as well as the Oppo Find M3. The build and the design, the display, the performance, the, the performance, I would say in some cases, balances out because obviously the OnePlus and the Oppo have more RAM. Whereas the 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy is a slightly more optimized, overclocked, and tuned version of that chip in the Galaxy. Cameras, again, I think cameras overall as a package, potentially, especially when it comes to video performance, Samsung is definitely going to take it. Pixel potentially might take it. Whereas in terms of the range of picture performance, yeah, it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough battle, which is something that. It's gonna be such a toss up that I really wanna see in action. Battery and charging performance, definitely I think OnePlus are gonna win it. Bigger battery, better chip optimization, better charging, but it does fall short not having wireless charging. So I've gotta give it that in, ter in terms of that missing feature, which is just not good. You can't be having that. And the overall software experience and obviously battery, I think collectively what we're seeing here is an impressive outing for OnePlus and Oppo. I think it's going to be available from mid to third week of November. I'm going to try my best to hunt for one so I can get that content in. I think the main priority for me right now is to see if, let me know, would you want to see a OnePlus Open slash Oppo Find M3 versus Fold 5 versus the Pixel Fold three-way definitive camera comparison? You want it? I'm going to produce it for you and I definitely want to test it and see how these phones, but in terms of my initial verdict, I would give it a very, 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 very strong provisional. 7.5 to an eight.